does a look back my channel. Today in this video, we are once again in Deep Dark Dubai, well, Deep before. But this time, we don't have some ordinary guests. We have a woman world champion of three dives, Miss Natalia Jarkova. And today, we are going to be interviewing her, and we are going to be talking about what she does in three dives. So, welcome to the show. Thank you. And Thanks for having really me. And we are really happy to have the honor to stand on the show today and to be so let's get right into the interview. My personal belief that swimming is just overall the best sport ever. Okay, so you fill your mouth with the air. You're gonna exhale into it. Mm. nothing impossible the world is changing uh, believe in yourself and uh, keep uh, being true to yourself ask yourself what do I want and don't take it from anyone else and don't let them define what you must do mm -hmm. and shake it off a little bit So now guys, that we have Natalia Zhakova in front of us here, in the conference room here in Deep Dive Dubai, let's actually interview her. So again, welcome Queen. Thank you. <laughs> and let's just ask you some basic questions to start off, like we do with every single person we interview. So first of all, when did you actually start? Uh, like the free diving itself, mm -hmm. um, I believe that was 2008. And when did you start yeah. swimming? And swimming, I, I started swimming when I was seven years old, uh, like from the very childhood and I did swimming like for all the time I was in the school until the high school, until the graduation. And then I kind of smoothly transitioned into free diving. So I believe like I've been in the water all my life. That's what I usually say. And how were you actually able to do this? How were you actually able to become a free diver and to do it? Um, the f well, funny story, if it's funny, uh, that it was somehow unintentional. Um, a lot of freedivers I teach these days, they come to, to the courses or classes and they say, oh, I watched that video or I watched that person freediving or I saw the picture, like it was so beautiful or somebody come to freedive because they dream about swimming with the whales. Somehow I never had like any of those points in my life. It wasn't like I woke up one day and decided that I want to be a free diver. But instead what happened is after taking a um, like break in sport career with the swimming, I got a part-time summer job just, just for fun in the swimming pool where it happened to be uh, my future coach was teaching free diving. And uh, he kind of saw me in the water. He told me, hey girl, like you're really like confident in the water. Like here are the long fins. How about you trying them on? Yeah. And I got the fins and I started to free dive and free diving was very new back in the days in Ukraine. I believe the first competition was held in 2007 and that was year 2008 when I tried it for the first time. One year after Just one year after and because of my swimming background I was uh, well, relatively good on it uh, immediately and I got the, like on the training I got to the level of national record and then I thought like, huh, you know what, like I can do that. It seems like it's something uh, fun for me and I'm talented. Why don't we continue? And we continued for a while and without even knowing it, I became a free diver. All right, well, funny. <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thanks, Moshe. So, actually, what motivated you to become a swimmer and what motivated you to actually do free diving? Because I heard that, like you just said, you started with swimming and then you did free diving. Why mm -hmm. couldn't you? to start off with freediving. Now that I understood, you, you by mistake got into freediving, so you could have just started with freediving like that. It, it wasn't like a mistake, it was like, I would rather call it a, like some kind of fate or something what was meant to be, like just the life shape. Just, just from the 
stopped from your path of being uh, a, swimmer, a swimmer, then it got into you becoming a freelancer. Yeah. yeah. And what actually yeah. motivated you to start swimming? Uh, well, I was seven years old. I was not ever in, even close to as uh, motivated and intentional as you are in your age. And my seven years old, I barely knew what I wanted. Um, and the swimming came in my life as a kind of like a somewhat medical prescription. So my uh, parents were a bit concerned with like uneven shoulders and potential like scoliosis or something. And as a as just a way to keep a body growing in a healthy way, they put me in the swimming classes, and that's where it turned out that I'm actually a competitive person. And um, actually, you know what? It is when I'm talking about it, I think that no, I did know what I wanted because as they put me in a swimming group for, for kids who just like was hobby, like doing hobby classes, I came to them and I told them like, you know what, I want to go into sports group. Like that was me actually who initiated like all the competition thing. I forgot about it. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Yeah. So like you were saying, you, what, you started swimming because you, uh, because your parents thought that you had some skeleton problem or some problem with your bones, right? Well, they, they were concerned <laughs> that I, I might get some, yeah. Mm. Right. So do you think that it's actually good for a, for a kid to actually get into uh, swimming? Like you did? My personal belief that swimming is just overall the best sport ever. Okay, free diving and then swimming. Like together, uh, water sports, it's uh, so harm like uh, it's so like harmonic how it develops the body. You don't get that strength and uh, over pressure, you don't get compressions. Like if you're, let's, do, let's say, doing running. So you won't ever get a joints issue or something like that from swimming because you're basically in a like, close to zero gravity and the development is amazing like for the muscles they become flexible and strong at the same time as opposed to muscles you can see in adults sometimes who build them in the gym like very so you think contracted it's, it's and it's like bulky. Mm -hmm. So you think it can actually make a very a solid and very good body especially for a kid who's growing? Perfect, yes. Right. I believe swimming is the best, also for breathing, which is a big issue nowadays. So, in your diving career, in your free diving career, can you tell us actually one of the most memorable moments when you were doing that? Uh, well, my free diving career at this point um, has been built around com competition mainly. So I would uh, I traveled a lot, but the purpose of the travel was not the diving with the animals or with us or something. So my it was about the competitivity and actually to win. Yeah, it's uh, more about world records. It's about uh, expanding all limits. Uh, it's one of the things I love about free diving that you can't really approach it with that like blunt competitiveness saying like I'm gonna do it whatsoever because that's never gonna work like that you're gonna be very much in tune with your own body so it's competing through expanding your limits and that fine balance is what drawn me towards this sport and this is something what I'm trying to pass down to my students and to people yeah, but you're also a coach. yeah I am coach and instructor so my most memorable, memorable moment is from the competition. Is so it's basically your whole career is your most memorable moment. Uh, I can like separate some points of it, like something a bit more uh, fun, something like some competitions were a bit more disappointing, some a bit more fun, some more challenging, some more rewarding. So they all different, of course, yeah. Mm. But, uh, and you overall do you think that the competition of free diving really just that that's what was driving you and that's with your each time was your best moment basically there were many of them yeah for sure and as someone who's been achieving many world records what do you believe uh, sets you apart from different and other free divers and other people in sport good good question um i kind of want to say nothing well, I, yeah, I don't think we're like that different. Um, we are unique. We are all unique, but we are all the same. Like we're people in this particular sport. We're all free divers, and uh, there is nothing what makes me better or worse than other people, uh, than other free divers with other other girls I competed with. 
Um, at this point, my last competition, um, well, maybe not the last, but, but the last the at latest, this point, the, yeah, latest. the latest, it was 2021. I haven't competed since then, and uh, of course, all the girls I did compete with before, they made a big progress at this time. Um, I'm thinking maybe to go back. Uh, maybe yeah, you it again you're and then there is of course there is a big difference in the results of but course, that's yeah. in every sport that's what makes athletes different what results they achieve and everything else is more like a philosophical right. question great so what challenges have you actually faced as a freediver and how did you actually overcome them and how did you face them well as a freediver in terms of freediving itself doing the thing uh, the most Common challenge is probably equalization. When you go down underwater, the water pressure builds up and uh, you start to feel pressure in your ears. Um, the common misconception uh, between uh, people who like, haven't tried free diving or even scuba diving for that matter is that people who dive deep learn to feel it. Like, like they still feel it, but they learn to live with it. But that's not true you learn how to compensate that pressure that's called equalization yeah and this exactly and the deeper you go is more equalizations you need to make so if you're good in it then you feel the same pressure in your sinus and your ears at 100 meter depth as you feel it at the surface so there is actually mm. like so no i think your, world, your your record which is not official i think i saw in one of the videos mm. with 95 meters the deepest of them was 102. Oh, 102. Okay. That was with a monofin. That oh, was what? not uh, with a monofin. as like a one big, big fin. Uh, oh, okay. I'll share a video with you later. Like a mermaid. You can, you can use it. Like, maybe insert. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like a mermaid tail. Like that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's the most efficient and the deepest dives have been made with a monofin. So, um, like you were saying, you were using this, you, you were using this monofin, like this mm -hmm. one fin, like a mermaid. Uh, to go down to 102 meters, right? 102 <laughs> meters. Yeah. It's just two meters, but it's okay. It, it's more. It's yeah. more than 100. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, and that's official. Yeah, that's an, uh, that's an official result. And that's the deepest I've been so far. Uh, but that result was in the world record itself. The uh, deepest dives are done with the monofins and the world records I got were in a different discipline. Mm -hmm. There are a few right. ways. And how, how do you dive. actually equalize while diving? Uh, well, there are a few techniques. But what do you use? What is the process? There is the one called mouth fill. It's quite like an advanced. Uh, it's quite an advanced technique. Everybody get well, not everybody. Okay, many free divers get to learn it once they pass a uh, depth of uh, 30, 40 meters. So if you start. Sure? Hmm? Can you show us? <laughs> well, I can. Sh I can show it. It's gonna be. F uh, it's gonna be funny. Uh, okay. Let me show it, and then I'm gonna explain what's happening. Right, it's gonna see. be like a proper training video and equalization. So you did scuba dive yourself, right? Yeah. So you know already that you gotta yeah, equalize. You know knows and when you equalize like that, where does the air come from? Uh, you mean where it goes out? Where it goes out? It goes from the ears out. And where it comes from? From your nose. And where it gets uh, from, where it goes to your nose, from your mouth, and there, from your from the the the, the, the what do you call it uh, respirator regulator. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Regular respirator. Okay, the whole point that it is anyway, it comes like the storage of the air in your in your body and uh, in your lungs, right? So sooner or later, like you running out of air in your lungs when you free dive. Because as you're getting deeper, the pressure compresses that air, right? Makes sense? Mm, right. So your lungs becoming really small. And at some point, like a depth of 40 meters is about like one fifth of its size. So it's like really tiny and you can't really use the air anymore. So once you dive deeper than 40 meters, you need to store that air somewhere safely in a different place. Uh, so you can actually use it for equalization. And that's when the technique called mouth fill, which I'm about to show, comes in. As you might guess from let's the name, let's, let's not laugh. <laughs> as you might guess from the name, the air gets stored in your mouth. So mouth fill, like you, yeah, you fill your mouth with the air. 
You're going to exhale into it. And get like all your mouth, as much air as you can, like uh, get your mouth full of air. And then it sits there and you continue equalizing. So you may have air in your lungs. Right. Now I'm just releasing it through the nose. So, so you will have the air from the equalization. So you have the air from the lungs, then go and try to get it into your mouth. Like mm -hmm. let's see if we can do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really advanced one, and uh, we're, we would be getting way ahead of us if we would start actually learning it. But, so, uh, like, at what level would you start learning that? Once you, once you know how to dive comfortably and safely to 30 meters depth mm. on the breath hold, that's when you start learning mouth talk. So, the blue hole, uh, which is an underwater cave, is one of your biggest dives I've heard. Can you tell us more about it? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, it's a big dive in terms yes. that not many people have done it. It's in and Egypt, right? Dahab. It is in Dahab Egypt. Egypt. There is a place called Dahab, which is one hour drive from Sharm el Sheikh. Sharm el Sheikh is a, like as a resort town, and it's the nearest airport. It's on. Sinai Peninsula is mm -hmm. about eight hours drive from Cairo. So that's a, it, it's not, well, I don't know if it qualifies as a cave, but it's a swim through. Mm -hmm. So it's a, at the depth of 56 meters, and it's in the shape of the arch. And I think I, really, I think I saw some people free dive there. Yes. Some it's like a tiny cave, but it's like a big hole, like this arch. It's not really tiny, it's like really like, yeah, big. Really big. If you think about it, yeah. Um, if you look at it, if you look at it from the top, you would see, so like a coral, you know, like how coral reef goes uh, away from the coast, like into the sea. If you look yeah. from above, like from Google Maps view, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then there is, so it's like a coral reef, uh, like a plateau, quite wide. And in the middle, you would see a blue hole. So it's just like a, like a, like there is nothing there and it's like a, like a glass, like a cup shape in the coral reef. So it's big, it's not really tiny. You can get a depth of 100 meters. The side of it, which is facing to the open ocean, has this arch. It starts, so it's like a solid wall, 56 meters deep. But at 60, uh, uh, sorry, 56 meters deep. But at 56 meters deep, there is this opening which is, I'm actually not sure how wide it is, but it is quite wide, like I would say maybe 40 meters wide. And it's the shape of the arch and the very tip of it is 56, sometimes with a low tide it gets 54. So some free divers, scuba divers and free divers, they go down, they cross the arch, which is like 30 meters, like the thickness of that wall was 30 meters. So you cross it and you surface in the open ocean. Uh, it, uh, story of it was like one of the dives was featured in the recent documentary on Netflix, The Deepest Breath. That was not a great, uh, that was not a great example of it. And generally speaking, uh, free divers, like before that time, didn't get incidents uh, so diving not, through the arch. So you should not watch that, that, that uh, movie you recommend. You absolutely should, because it's about free diving and there are just as so many movies it's out there. But you see it's not a good representation of the blue. Yeah, it's not a good representation of blue hole overall. Um, so it's it's a challenging dive. Few people done it. Uh, very few people done it on their own power. So sometimes people dive with underwater scooters, let's say, or with scuba tank. But free divers, as it is, uh, not so many. I did my dive tagging along with a friend of mine who was also challenging himself to, to make that dive. I believe he was going with no friends, Alexander Gubinchikov, another Ukrainian freediver. And I'm like, I, I came uh, that day and said, oh, okay, if you're diving, can I just like try and do it myself too? So I believe he did his dive and then I did mine. And recently I actually found the footage from the dive, it was back in 2016, a long time ago. Cool, okay. But how did you actually hold your breath for the blue dive? Can you show us your 
method. Maybe it's updated from when you did from your blue dot, but can you show us your current method how to do it? Meta really doesn't change. Uh, well, it does occasionally change, but there is um, just a general guidelines how you how you breathe when you free dive, and the most important one is um, keep breathing normally. We kind of you don't need to um, make a hyperventilation or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I know. Because just, I yeah. think that this you have like some sort of method to stock the most amount of uh, oxygen. So that's one thing, like the how to inhale before the dive. Yeah, and then it's the consumption of the actual... Oxygen. Yes, and then there is a consumption of actual oxygen in your body, which should be low. And I like to explain it through uh, through the cars, like how cars work, you know, like when, it, when it's going like full speed, full power, burning a lot of fuel, you won't get far. But if it's like a low, stable, steady uh, pace, your fuel will last long. And that's, it's like boom, boom, yeah. Boom. So your 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 heart is your engine, your oxygen is your fuel. Keep your engine stable and steady in the low uh, RPMs. Go for a long time, and your fuel will last long. Yeah. So whatever breathe you need to make is the breathing which brings your heartbeat lo lower, heartbeat lower. Right. And can you show us the actual. Stockage of the most amount of oxygen. You want to try? Yeah, I'll try. Are you? Or you want me to show? For you show, then I try. Let Let me guide you through this, so you can, so you can try. Okay, so yeah, you're you're right. We start. No, I, with, I, I, yeah. yeah, we start with hands on the stomach and chest. Okay, that's too much. What? Too much. Release it. <laughs> See, when you inhale a lot, you end up being very tense. And uh, holding that air, and as soon as you get tension, your RPMs going up because your activity, like you're becoming active, you're actually doing something, right? You you need after the after you finish your inhale, you need to get to the point where you are you're doing absolutely nothing and you're fully relaxed. Right. So, so start from the from feeling. Start from the belly. Yeah. You know, finish with the chest. But as soon as you have done that inhale. Just inhale as much as you feel natural. Don't try to make it full. Now close your uh, vocal folds, like you will feel the closure, like something like stuck in here. And relax your chest and shoulders, drop it down, keeping the air inside. You might feel a little pressure in your chest at the moment. You can move gently, make your back round, like forward, lean forward a little bit, and, and just relax, find a neutral position. Try Imagine that you're trying to fall asleep. You can try to close your eyes. Mm -hmm. And shake it off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm sure that we can do much longer, but... You can, you can try, but that's, uh, this, is, this is one of the tricks. Like well, storing but, mm -hmm. a lot of air doesn't really help because as soon as you inhale a lot, you need to keep it. And that keeps you awake. It can feel like you, you won't feel very comfortable relaxed. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um so now can you actually show us how you do this? Because like how yeah. do you currently do it? How okay. do you do it so, if you were in a So if I would do it, if I would do the last inhale uh, before my dive, I would go through the stomach the yeah. same way. And I would breathe through my mouth because I would either wear a mask or my nose would be pinched with a nose clip. And those tiny sips, which I uh, just did in the end, uh, called packing. And that you also do on kind of like advanced level of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I, that when I saw this, uh, I think I saw on the internet some French guy. He was like doing it, I think with a basic level, like... If you watched like any like competition videos and I chances some Belgium national record, I think it was like probably uh, yeah. Ch chances are you did see people packing. So what what we do in that moment is that we like after we inhaled fully, we transition the air from outside like to our lungs without engaging rib cage, without like actually inhaling, and this is a trick to keep. 
your uh, body relax, but get a lot of air. So can you show that one more time, the, 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 the actual technique? It's just going to promise me that you're not, not going to apply it and nobody's going to apply it, okay? I'm just demonstrating it. It's a uh, dangerous sport, it's an extreme sport, and you must take courses and learn with qualified instructors, okay? This is just like for demonstration purpose, all right? Okay. Do not try this at home. <laughs> and not in the pool. Home is like half, half of a problem. <laughs> the problems, yeah. like, problem starts when people try to do it in the pool on their mm -hmm. own, okay? So never do that alone. This technique is also called uh, carpa, mm -hmm. which is a name for the fish. Like if you ever seen a fish swimming up, like just below the surface and how they eat food from the oh, surface of water. Fish. Yeah, that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty, pretty much. But again, it's an advanced technique and uh, mm -hmm. even without advanced techniques, free diving never must be practiced alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, it absolutely must, and everybody who wants to try free diving they must take a course with qualified instructors. Like you, for example. Uh, for example, yeah, but I'm like, one of them, yeah. Okay, that actually told us how you actually get your oxygen and how you consume the less amount. Mm -hmm. Let's ask the next question. So, how do you approach training for free diving, both physically and mentally? Um, so, free diving is, uh, in terms of preparation and training, as is any other sport and any other activity, uh, you're gonna be smart about how you do it. And there is a lot of like there is some difference. I would actually say it's a big difference if you train free diving as a hobby, or if you train free diving on the competition like competitive level, as I did. If it's a hobby class, then simple consistency and regularity coming, let's say, once a week to deep dive Dubai, or if you happen to live somewhere on the shore and you go with your free diving buddies or instructors once a week, that's completely fine. You just keep um, keep yourself in shape, and that that's one thing. When you do once a week, there is not much uh, planning need to be involved. You just follow your heart. You just feel what feels good. There is some planning again, like if you have a qualified trainer or coach with you that would that would like consult you and build a schedule for you. But if you're a free diving athlete and you go into competition, as in any other sport, uh, that it's requires your yeah, that, that's your everyday life, and sometimes it's twice a day, and it's becoming like a different lifestyle is becoming very challenging, and for for your body. You need to be very cautious about not over, to overtrain because it's not like, a, yeah. let's say, if you go in the gym. Yeah, you can black out eventually if you don't have enough oxygen when you get that, that's, that's like a one time thing. But, uh, I'm talking about the training like, in a long perspective, like how you feel yourself. Like if you do gym, if you're training running, eventually your muscles start to hurt. So you really know when it's enough for you, right? In free diving, we don't have that intensity. And the biggest challenge we have is uh, our nervous system, which doesn't hurt. So within one training, it's really hard to tell whether it is enough or where you can push a little more. So that's, that, that, that's a big challenge. So in free diving, we always take a safe, safe approach. We always stay on the uh, easy side of things, like most of the time, like most people would choose that one. And um, we like sometimes we laugh and call it a sport for lazy people because you support you're supposed to sleep a lot, you're supposed to eat a lot, and when you train, if you notice, if you notice how free divers dive, this like we spend like out of two hours training, we spend maybe one hour just doing nothing, resting and breathing at the surface because that's the preparation for the dive. So it, it is as any other sport. In some sort of ways, but in some other ways, it's like completely different. It's uh, oh, so it takes like one hour to start breathing uh, with your method, or just to no. I mean, in total, like you do a dive, which is three minutes, but then you breathe ten minutes to 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 make that dive. Mm. Oh, and then ten like, minutes ultimate... to actually get all of the oxygen. Uh, well, kinda, yeah. You would breathe 
three, five minutes, like it, it's not like you're making one whole inhale in 10 minutes. You keep breathing, but it's a long time you take to relax and to start dialing the heart rate. Right, so, so for the like for the preparation, you're supposed to simply do this, that, right? Just for the preparation. Kind of, yeah. And then at the, at the last breath, you want to mm -hmm. take like you did. Yeah, and then the last breath, before the actual dive, you inhale deeply. Mm -hmm. Um, my question is, when you do free diving, do you consider the depth that you're going to, or do you consider like, let's say I go down to six uh, to fifty meters? Do we say I went to fifty meters, or do we say I went to one hundred meters? Because no, it's, on, it's only depth. You don't you don't depth. you don't consider the distance. So you actually went two hundred meters, two hundred eight. Well, to to dive to a hundred meter depth, yes, you need to so, cover the distance so of two hundred. So you did this two hundred four yeah. meters of actual. Diving, out yeah. Out there the is a, there is a different discipline in the swimming pool, in the actual swimming pool. You know, the like not the deep one, the couple of meters deep. Uh, it's called dynamic, dynamic free diving. Uh, that one where you count the distance. So it's about how long you can swim holding your breath. And uh, just to put it into perspective, the current world record for male free divers is. Um, 300 something like 300 yeah meters, i think there's a little bit more swim alexa alexey molchanov he dives deep uh, that was uh, how deep uh, 100 i think his current world record is 136 or 137 meters well so you're actually really close with him and that that's, that's a big difference it's like huge oh. difference yeah oh yeah the pressure then even come. even two meters at that depth even two meters is a big difference and one meter can separate you from the world record and uh but you hold the women's world record i used to uh not at the moment at, at the, your at your prime uh, like your your best version of yourself well, back in the days, yeah, I don't know, maybe my best, best version of myself might be still coming. <laughs> I'm about to discover. Uh, yeah. But yeah, when the active year is competition, so 2017, 18, 18, 19. And now what's the new record? So your record that you made 102 meters down mm -hmm. in depth, and that was the, 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 the women's world record before. That wasn't. Oh, that wasn't? No, that was the third place. Uh, in that discipline, I had the, the first place, the world record that year was, I believe, 115 meters. Oh, and? And the girls actually shared it. So there were two people, like the, the first, like sharing the first place in the world record of 115 meters. Then I was with 102, which is kind of big gap. Um, yeah. But the world record that year or for me was with bifins. It's like a different discipline. Not with the one big fin, but the two long. So fins. you 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 hold the world record for bifins. Not at the moment. Still not. Oh. S still, yeah. <laughs> let's see. Maybe you can break the record and go all the way up to let's say maybe one. My, day, maybe, one day maybe, but like I'm not really thinking about it because that's a lot of dedication, and I feel like I'm in a bit different place right now. More like life. gym and stuff. Uh, yeah, more like family. So yeah. you you stopped now. Do you think you stopped competition or will be, or will continue it? I took a it, it. I definitely had a break. I definitely gonna participate in competition again, but uh, maybe just for fun. You know, like it's not always about world records. It's like I got enough. I, I had my I had my time. I like let someone else like let someone else do go and have fun out there and uh, my priorities are changing and like i want to spend my time differently maybe at the end maybe when you're about to finish maybe you should do one last dive and go all the way up we'll see maybe <laughs> okay so what advice would you give to aspiring freedivers and people who want to start freediving first of all get qualified instructor and the coach mm -hmm. never freedive alone yeah, yeah may maybe, maybe, like maybe if, you're, if you're in Dubai, you get, uh, <laughs> that's courses. a good, maybe that's at the a good end, option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe at the end you could say, oh, where did you get courses from you? I think that would be a very good pick. Yeah, uh, maybe. Former maybe. world record, yeah. record holder. So those, like, get a qualified instructor, get a good coach, never free dive alone, and be patient. Like, uh, taking time and... Uh, 
taking your like pacing it out is really important because again some people burn as candles and some as firecrackers and if you aspire to become a free diver you better be a candle right and beyond competitions i heard that since we gave an interview that you actually do teaching and you actually coach people mm -hmm. in the courses for uh, to do free diving right yeah that's something so what actually now. motivated you to do this and maybe you can uh, share the audience and the people watching now where can you actually get courses from you um so what motivates me is uh, the feeling i personally had when i free like when i was a free diver and doing it like all the time it's a very special state of mind and you think you thought that you should live like you should you felt like it would be good to give this feeling to other people correct right yeah so i'm I'm, sure? i'm looking i'm looking to share that and i believe that's something what a lot of us need these days uh, life is crazy and especially here in dubai it's very tense and uh, it's speed of life is unbelievable so I believe that free diving is one of the best ways how people can slow down and uh, well as for the question how to how to find me and like uh, I have my website I have my Instagram page oh so uh, it's not free diver like N-A-T N-A-T F-R-E-E-D-I-V-E-R and guys if you want to take any courses from here Natalia Jacoba Here's the link to our website, and this is where you can book some lessons with a former world champion rec uh, mm -hmm. record holder of the deepest dive for a woman. I mm -hmm. highly recommend it. I've not tried yet, but already from seeing some of her students, uh, I I really hope in the future maybe I can take some lessons. Hopefully, but Hopefully. It's just, yeah, just a little time. <laughs> Too young, right? So can you can you show us the importance of actually good technique in freediving and safety? And can you actually tell us which um can you actually tell us the aspects in these training techniques? How do you actually teach them? Um uh, well what we do, we we as I mean freediving instructors in, in general, yeah. Technique. We include that training uh as mandatory part for any course of any level, starting from the very beginning to the professional courses where people become instructors. It's like absolutely must for everyone who becomes free diver to know how the safety works and The main important points, like two key points I already mentioned a few times today, is never free dive alone and, and free dive with qualified free diving instructor or qualified body. Once you become qualified free diver yourself, you can uh, free dive with somebody at the same level as you are and then you do safety for one another. And the important point is that like always keep an eye, so you know it's not like a you're just being there. You actually need to look for your body. And if we're talking about deep dives, then uh, let's say a free diver goes to 20 meters depth, then his body will dive to 10 meters depth and meet him halfway. And they would, they, they would come up right. together. And how um, do you teach this? Yeah. How do you teach your... We, we simulate it. Uh, well, first we cover it at the theory classes, like every course consists of a so theory you're in a classroom. session. You're in mm -hmm. a classroom? Uh, I think that there's one over there, here in Deep Dive Dubai. Yeah, we have classrooms here. Yeah, so is a, uh, there is always a theory part of any course, there is a dry part where we learn to breathe first, and there is practice. Uh, we practice breath hold itself without diving deep first, like uh, so people learn like newcomers learn how to just breathe and hold their breath then we learn to use fins and then we put it all together and we learn uh, equalization and we start diving and then when people feel more or less confident we go about deep, deep, dive, deep, deep dives yeah we start to simulate mm -hmm. those situations and rescues and everybody gets to try it and uh, to some level of confidence uh, like build, right. that, build up the skill to some level of confidence And in the future, do you have any goals that you'd like to complete in the future? Well, in your career, in plenty, your career? <laughs> plenty is some of them are related to free diving. I'm looking to uh, to build a school. I used to have one uh, in Ukraine, and it still exists. It's still, still teach that? function. Um, 
occasionally I go there. Well, it, as you might know, there is a war uh, oh, now, right, yeah. in, now in that country, so it's not that straightforward. Uh, my my business partner, she took over the Ukra uh, Ukrainian school. She lives there now, so that is growing. Uh, like and and she's, on people. Uh, she's another free diver. Right? Yeah, yeah, she is a free diving Did instructor. Did she do free dive with you? Uh, she learned with me, yeah. I was her instructor trainer. I like I did teach her to like mm. become a free diving and, instructor. And she's currently teaching with you, taught her to the people in Ukraine. Yes. And now we are we're at our last question. I just ask one quick question just before that, if you can answer quickly. Like biologically, is it easier for women to free dive than men or is it harder or is it the same level? That's interesting. How did you come up with that question? Well, <laughs> when it comes to um, free dive Dubai? I don't know actually. Like, uh, well, statistically, the results for competition, for com competitive results for men, are deeper, longer, and like as in many other sports, uh, more superior <laughs> to women. But um, maybe there is a certain level at which I would say free diving would come more naturally to uh, to ladies uh, because of flexibility and uh, adaptation. Oh and yeah, because I, I see that some of your videos were actually you were teaching swimming to some people, and mm -hmm. you were you were doing this yoga. Uh, there is a big part of uh, big part of uh, free diving where you yeah that probably was no fins masterclass yeah how, I to, saw it. how to free dive with no yeah. fins and I think it was like you were tying your your back leg and you could <laughs> you were moving like your hands yeah that was, a, it was there are cool. there are a lot of funny exercises you can do about that. Right. Um, so yeah, flexibility allows to dive a bit deeper. Maybe ladies are a bit more flexible. Uh, well, flexible for sure, but also mentally a bit more open uh, to let go of the goals. You know, guys, maybe it's a generalization, but it's a, it's definitely pre uh, how would you call it like prejudice we have in the society where boys and men are more goal oriented and ladies a bit more like creative. Uh, let's call it that way. So maybe that would play some part into it. All right, right, cool, cool. So now our last question, our final mm -hmm. question. What is your message and what do you want to say to all of the viewers around the world and, if, and the, especially the boys and girls and especially the small girls watching right now? All right, so hi all you <laughs> out there and especially those little pretty ladies who is going to grow up one day and uh, put themselves in the world out there. I want to say that there is nothing impossible, the world is changing, uh, believe in yourself and uh, keep uh, being true to yourself, ask yourself what do I want and don't take it from anyone else and don't let them define what you must do, be true to yourself, that's my message. Thank you. Free diving will help by the way. Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. So thank you for this lovely interview. And thank you for this extraordinary freediving uh, free interview. So yeah, welcome to the show. Welcome thank to the family. you. Ah, oh, that's so cute. Um, uh, <laughs> a small token of appreciation. We can thank you so much. Out. Love it. Okay. I would Great. definitely put it uh, on my, oh. like, on the best place. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you.